All right, guys, our next guest is coming off a win over Julian Robertson and is already set to take on Roxanne Modafferi, UFC 246, one of the hottest prospects in the women's UFC flyweight division. The future is now. The future is here. Macy Barber, welcome back to Submission Radio. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We are doing very, very well. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we see you're in your car. There's people doing jumping jacks outside but of course we're, we're the ones doing jumping jacks macy because it's good to have you back on the show it's been just over a week ago since the anniversary of your official ufc debut so where you finished by the way hannah cyphers in the second round in your home state of colorado first off we have to congratulate you because we love a good anniversary here on submission radio and secondly how did you reflect on that occasion did you celebrate that milestone at all um, I believe it was a Sunday, so I was just, you know, getting ready to start another week of training, and that was, um, it was about the time that I had just gotten official confirmation for the fight, uh, for January 18th, so kind of just, just a lot of excitement, and, um, it's crazy to see where I've come from, so I'm happy. Do you ever look at it sort of like, that's one anniversary, do you ever look a year from now sort of where you'll be? Like, do you think you'll potentially be, you know, celebrating, I don't know, maybe, or preparing for a championship fight, maybe looking back on a title win? What, what, what do you think the next year is going to be like for you? I do, you know, I, I actually said that, you know, look at where I've come from in just a year, you know, like a year ago um, from where I was to where I am now. And just I can just imagine, you know, where I'm going to be one year from uh november 10th of this year so mm. is 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 yeah. uh because i know i know you like to set alarms and plans and calendars yeah when do you sit down and do that for 2020 have you already done that or is this something that you're looking to do once the year um, is over what what's the procedure like well i i always keep track of things and i always plan things out but um Right now, the countdown is for January 18th um, and that fight coming up. You know, we have just under nine weeks. So we're like eight and a half weeks right now. Um, so I have that on my phone and then also uh, the other countdown to, to 23. But um, yeah, th that's it. You know, those are my goals and those are what I'm really focused on right now. Nice. Well, of course, the task at hand is Roxanne Modafferi in January at UFC 246. So I guess the big question is, how did this fight actually come together? Um, well, we knew that I wanted to fight January 18th. And then we also knew that uh, a lot of the girls in the top 10, they're already booked. So we kind of took a look at the ones that were available. And um, we were offered uh, Lauren and then we were taken Lauren was taken away and then we were offered Roxy and then I said yes and um when I was offered Roxy they actually were like um we have Roxy and she's already in so mm -hmm. that's kind of like what we're into so yeah that's kind of yeah, how I mean, it came about I mean it's a really exciting fight and we can't wait to see it but I guess some people would be questioning why not Paige Van Zandt why wasn't her name sort of coming across your desk it seems like the fight that everybody wanted to see. What happened there? Did the UFC at all try to pursue that one for you? It did, yeah. They offered it to Paige um, at 125. She said no. Um, from what I heard, she said she wanted to fight at 115, but she would need more time. Um, so as far as I know, it's offered to her at 125 when she wants to take the fight at 125. And other than that, you know, it's kind of like, I'm just going to keep doing what I do with my career. And when she decides to fight, we'll fight. When, when, I mean, there's so much steam behind this fight, you know, you and Paige, and obviously she sort of put out that list where it was like she tagged everyone in the division except for yourself. Do you think that her wanting to fight at 115 was, was sort of a legitimate reason, or do you think it's because she didn't really want to take the fight with yourself? Uh, honestly, I don't think she could ever make 115 again, you know, and it's been said multiple times that, you know, her family would not um, support that, and... I can understand that. You know, I mean, like, the cut to 115 does not make sense mm. <laughs> for her, um, especially with her new addition. Um, but, honestly, I've moved past it. You know, I'm focused on uh, moving up through the ranks, and when she decides to fight, if she decides to fight, then then I'll still be here, and I'm, I'm totally down to go and beat her up. But um, until then, like, I'm really not worried about it. Uh, I don't care either way. 
you're moving on to bigger and better, right? Because you, you're gonna, you're already ranked ahead of her in the rankings. My career, anyway. yeah, yeah. My career will, my career will be successful no matter what if I beat her up or not. Um, that was just kind of like a bonus, like you know, beat her up and improve a point. But that's that's it. I mean, Roxanne, she is uh, legitimately someone that's been in the game for a really long time and not really someone that anyone could really hate because she's just such a nice person. Mm. She loves her Dragon Ball Z. She, she she conducts herself in a very professional way. What do you sort of imagine this build up towards this fight being like, you know, against Roxanne instead of, you know, potentially heated <laughs> fight week against a person like Paige Van Zandt? You know, honestly, I I agree with you. You know, I've been I've kind of seen Roxy here and there uh, in Vegas, and she is she's <laughs> she's happy. You know, and I I've said this on multiple interviews. Like she's just happy to be there, and she is such a um, she's been there for so long within the sport. She has so many fights. She has like thirty nine fights, I think. Um, and I don't know if that includes her amateur career or not. Uh, she's been around for a lot of fights and a lot of through a lot of the women's MMA. So it's really a, a very historic fight, I think, for us because um, we're taking someone who has has pretty much gone and done and seen it all. Uh, and then you have someone who's been working their whole life just to be um, where they are right now. And, and I'm super young and super new in my career. So you kind of have like the new and the old. And uh, I think people are going to be shocked. You know, they, they expect, they're like, oh, well, you're fighting her and she's got so much experience over you. Um, but what they don't realize is I've been working my whole life and and I'm 21, but that's like 17 years of, of work that I've put into this. So um, I'm excited, honestly, and I, I'm just ready to go out there and, and as always, finish a fight. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a fun experience for me. For sure. Mm, I, mean, I mean, obviously, like a lot of people looking at this Paige Van Zandt fight, but comparing these two challenges, do you believe Roxanne's a much bigger sort of challenge than a fight with someone like a Paige Van Zandt? Oh, absolutely. Um, Roxanne is is way better of a fighter than Paige Van Zandt, and there's a lot of women out there who would who are a tougher fight. Um, Paige Van Zandt just did the marketing well, you know, and that was because the UFC got behind her on that. Um, but like I've said multiple times, she didn't hold up her end of the deal, and and she didn't continue to progress as a fighter. She just continued to progress um, on the more marketing and, and media side of that. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot more girls that have been working their um, their butts off a lot a lot more than Paige has. Mm. It's interesting. Like you were sort of mentioning the, the like Roxanne and her experience. For anyone who's interested in the stats, she's 37. Well, you're still only 21, Macy. And it's a fascinating storyline. It's got that kind of old line versus the young line, uh, I guess, narrative to it. And obviously, your nickname is the future. If you beat someone like Roxanne, or I should say, when you beat someone like Roxanne, do you feel like it sort of solidifies you as the future? Sort of beating a girl who has fought in. All these organizations fought some of the best women in the world, and then here comes someone like yourself and sort of, despite her experience, comes in and, and sort of, I guess, takes the scalp, so to speak. I think it I think it does. Um, yeah, Roxanne, she's 37. I was five years old. Uh, ESPN, I believe, came out with an article. I was five years old when she started fighting. So, oh, wow. Uh, just for me to hear that, I was like, oh, man, wow, that's crazy. Um, and then, you know, like all the guys on the team – uh, when I told them that I was like, did you realize that I was five when she started fighting? And they were like, wow, like it's, it's just kind of something crazy to think about. Um, and I think it's a, I think it's a fight that covers pretty much every, every aspect and every year of, of women's MMA, because, you know, she came from the very beginning, you know, she fought, uh, Liz Carmouche and, and a lot of the, the earlier fighters. And now she's fighting someone who is like the, I'm the youngest one in the UFC as far as I'm, as far as I know. Um, so like she fought all those girls and now she's fighting here. So I think that's, that's really cool. But, um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like I'm just a completely different, I'm the new age of women's MMA, if that makes sense. Like I am what women's MMA is going to be someday, you know, like it's continuing to evolve into, uh, way more technical and way better of, um, of fights, I guess, than we'd had uh, in earlier women's MMA. So I just feel like I'm the new side of that. So yeah, I'm excited for it.
Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm excited just sort of hearing you talking about the fight. You know, you're someone who's known for obviously, you know, being an exciting fighter, being violent, and you know, really going for the finish and achieving that finish as well. I'm wondering, like, as as people who have never fought, what what is that feeling like when you are getting the finish in those last few seconds before the fight is stopped? And also, is it in any? I mean, I <laughs> you're a professional, you're going to go out there and do your job, but is it in any way in the back of your mind somewhat harder? to brutalize someone like a Roxanne who is just such a, you know, freaking nice person. Ooh, um, the way I look at it is if they had the chance to do that to me, they would, Mm. you know, and that's the way I look at it in every situation. And I also view it as it's me or them, you know, it's either I'm going to win and continue on progressing in my career or they're going to win and progress their career. And, I have a lot of goals to reach and I have a lot of things that I want to accomplish within the sport. And, um, as far as the finisher mentality, that's just something that I think, I think I have deep down within me, you know, I just, I was born with this, um, and I've created it, you know, you create it through a lot of hard work. It's not necessarily that I just go out there and I try to hurt girls all the, like when I'm in the fight, you know, I, I train for that, you know, I want to see that, um, all the training and the hard work, I want to see it pay off. So, um, I think that it's a combination of everything, honestly. Uh, but that's, you know, that finisher is not something that, that everyone has. And I know that I have it and clearly I've shown that. Well, you talk about wanting to be on big cards and here you are on UFC 246. It's your pay-per-view debut. And this is also a step for you from going from fight night fighter to a pay-per-view fighter. I mean, how does it feel? I mean, you mentioned countdowns. How does it feel to have that countdown to your pay-per-view debut in January? I'm excited. Um, obviously, it's it's new. Um, but I don't expect anything too different other than, you know, it's it's just an honor to be able to even be, one, in the UFC, but two, is to be on a pay-per-view where, you know, it's not just people that can just tune in and watch. Now they're actually like, oh, if you want to watch it, you have to pay f- to to see it and and you have to have a reason you know people aren't just going to pay for something that they don't really care about so um that's that's kind of an honor is to know that people actually care enough to want to buy and pay to see you fight so um it's exciting I feel like it's also kind of a milestone event, you know, the fact that or in your career going from a fight night fighter to now you're moving up to being a pay-per-view fighter and the way you're sort of progressing through the rankings, it seems like it's a it's sort of a sign of things to come in the future. But I'm wondering, what do you think of the fact that you might be fighting on the same card as Conor McGregor at the moment? All things, all signs are pointing to him returning on that card. Honestly, that was a that was a big dream of mine. You know, you never know when Connor's gonna be done fighting, honestly. And uh, that is something that I could not have asked to be on a, a card than than with Connor McGregor. Like that's that was a goal of mine and a dream of mine. And I didn't want to get too invested into that and you know just like completely have my mindset set on that because you cannot tell conor mcgregor what he's gonna do so and you can't you can't just plan on it so Mm. i didn't want to get my my hopes up too high but um that's definitely been something that i've really wanted to be able to do and uh, i feel like it's part of history you know he's one of the biggest in the ufc and uh, he is the biggest in the in the ufc and in a lot of the fight world and and to be able to share a card with him and and be on that is is incredible. Did you ask to be on this card specifically because he was on the card or was that just the date that the UFC proposed to you? Uh, no, I asked for this, this date and, um, I kind of had the, the understanding that he was going to be on the card, but I didn't, again, like I said, I didn't want to be like, all right, he's going to be the main event, but that's kind of like what I heard. So, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you were like, oh, yeah, January 18th. Like, help, huh? help and, yeah, I don't know. This sounds like a pretty good date. Huh? Connor's on that cut. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Fancy that. Yeah. Uh, it's like... I kind of sort of knew it was going to be that way, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. You, you know more about what's going on with the UFC than the UFC like to admit they know <laughs> themselves. So that's the best bit about it. Let me ask you, you know, obviously, Conor Mc, as media, we've been to a few Conor McGregor cards and they're crazy. You know, everybody's got their eyes on the card and also the fighters on the card benefit from more sort of eyeballs during the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. But 
What are some of the other things you look forward to sort of being on the same card as Conor McGregor? Like, for example, are you looking at possibly learning something from him, uh, maybe crossing paths with him, seeing how a guy like him handles, you know, the attention that he gets considering, you know, you're the future and you might be in that position one day? Um, you pretty much named a lot of things that go on in my head <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> um, yeah, from I always try to learn something from, you know, people who have made it big in the sport. Um, I also try to learn everything from as, as many people as I can. Um, but in terms of like just the energy and um, the energy of, of, of the people surrounding it and people watching, but also uh, I do, I like to see how fighters like Conor McGregor carry themselves like throughout fight week or um, if it ever happens to be in the back or however it works out, like to be able to see how other fighters carry themselves um, throughout fight week and uh, the night of the fight is, is something that I always try to do. Um, and then also just to know that if he knows that I'm on the same card as him and knowing that he's watching my fight, that's also a goal. You know, that that's also something that I like to think about because I want to I want to impress people that I look up to. So, um, yeah, just all around a good situation. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure he'll see this interview and sort of know that you're going to be on that card. I was just going to quickly say uh, he's fighting Donald Cerrone. A lot of people are saying, um, you know, it, it, it might be a surprise. Cerrone might shock the world and beat a guy like Conor McGregor in 2020 after everything that he's been through outside of fighting. What is your prediction, early prediction, uh, for this fight? Do you believe Conor McGregor makes the big return and beats Cerrone and then maybe even goes on to another potential title run? I don't know. That's a hard one for me to answer. And honestly, I've been so focused on my own fight that I couldn't give you a technical breakdown of that fight. Um, I am torn because I do, you know, I like Conor McGregor as a fighter and I've never met him in person. Um, I know Cowboy. And I definitely, like, have pulled for him every fight that I've ever watched of his. You know, he's he's another person that I've looked up to in my career. Um, when I made my debut in the UFC, he was the, what was he, the main event, right? He was the main event um, mm -hmm. when he fought. Mike Perry. Or no, he wasn't the main event. He was co-main event. My bad. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. So, I mean, that was, he's someone that I've followed, like, my entire career. And, and I really look up to him as well. So, I'm torn on that one. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the time, Macy. Right. We'll, nah, that's, <laughs> no need to apologize. Uh, we appreciate the time, by the way, so we'll let you go soon because you're sitting here giving us a time from your car. But I was just wondering, obviously, someone that you trained with, Ben Askren, uh, that was a massive sort of storyline the last sort of year or so, you training at Rufus Sport, um, and you went there to sort of, you know, improve your wrestling and get some of the best... Uh, teachings you can but obviously he retired the other day kind of shocked us a little bit a bit of a surprise for the mma community what was your reaction to ben retiring i wasn't surprised because he uh i talked with him before before the damian maya fight and he kind of gave me like the i may or may not and then um before he went on ariel show he uh told me the day before that that he was he was officially done um and honestly you know I just put out a post the, today or maybe this morning um, saying, you know, he may be done with the competitive side of his career. And it was, it was fun to watch. And, you know, again, another fighter that I look up to and I hear a lot of people saying, yeah, he's not that good. He, you know, he got wrecked and he, he got messed up in the UFC and, and he made his statement on that. But um, like I said, he, he may be done with the competitive side, but we're not done making history. And, and I'm, honored to have him as a part of making my history and and getting this this title and winning it yeah do you feel like in some ways this could i don't want to say like it would take over his legacy or overshadow but in in some ways if he helped you become ufc champion that could be like another chapter in his legacy if that makes sense i agree you know i don't think it'll ever overshadow what he's done already in his own career mm -hmm. um ben Askren is ben Askren, and his his career is is something that no one else can can overshadow or, or take away from him. You know, it's his, and that's nobody else can can do what he's already done. So, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's just another addition and another chapter in in creating and making him continue to be great. You know, um, 
I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's not over for him, if that makes sense. Like, he still has many things that he's going to accomplish, accomplish outside of the sport and uh, with, with the help of mine. Mm. Do, how in any way would this sort of affect or change or adjust your training because obviously he needs that hip replacement so I imagine he'll get the surgery and he might be sort of off the mats for a little bit does this change things in any way for you and will he still be in your corner uh, for potentially UFC 246 um I haven't asked him about how it would work um I do really well with learning just by someone explaining to me or telling me what to do like he could totally coach me and and he has before, you know, like being able to coach me and, and tell me how to do things without needing to show him. You know, I have a pretty good understanding and um, I'll do whatever it takes to make it work. Um, and I know he will as well. In terms of my quarter, I did ask him. And uh, as far as I know, he'll be out there with me uh, for fight week. So, yes, he will be in my corner. Well, I'll tell you what, we are super pumped to see you at UFC 246, possibly one of the biggest cards of 2020 on January 18th. Just before we wrap, Macy, a quick prediction if we can. How do you sort of see this pay-per-view debut going in your mind? Same way all the all the other ones have. I'm going to come out, uh, obviously come out with my hand raised, and I, I do see another finish. You know, I'm, I'm never going to stop fighting for a finish, and... Uh, I'm going to keep putting exciting fights out, but yeah, I definitely think that the future is going to show off um, and take over. Yeah, well, I can't wait. I love it. I love it when it's a big pay-per-view. I love it when uh, fighters like you, the future, are on that card and everybody can watch you do your thing. January 18th in Las Vegas, Nevada, UFC 246. Of course, follow Macy Barber on Twitter, Instagram, at Macy Barber. It's a worthwhile follow. She's always got great content. And Macy, thank you so much for coming on to Submission Radio, putting up with the Jumping Jacks guy outside and <laughs> being in your car for so long and talking to us. It's always a pleasure for us to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' time. Awesome. Thanks, Macy. Bye.